All right, boys. What can I do for you? Well, Floyd, uh, my paper wants some dope on your new thrill picture. Fine, take a seat. Shoot. Go ahead and shoot, Jack. No posing, though. The idea is brand new, Joe. Never before done in movies. I'm making real motion pictures of true adventures in the lives of everyday people. Here's one that'll blow your hat off. This happened back in the horse and buggy days down in the most beautiful spot in all America, the Cumberland Mountains in southeastern Kentucky. Our hero, Eddie Capps, is just 22 years old, a hustling young salesman for the Keystone Tobacco Company. In those days, salesmen often traveled through the rugged mountain country on horseback. Here you are, Eddie. <clears throat> the weather looks kind of threatening. Oh, I'll get through all right, Mr. Johnson. United Tobacco Company won't get the jump on me this trip. Well, I'm all for you, Eddie. But Gus Loeb's been selling for United up in that hill country for a long time. Say, I hear Gus left yesterday. Oh, well, I'll hustle along. I'll catch up with him. That's the spirit, Eddie. I'll see you when you get back. Right. So long. So long. Well, sir, somebody told him about a shortcut through the mountains. It was just a backwood trail, but it cut off 12 miles, so Eddie took it. Night found him in the heart of those lonely mountains. A storm came up. It rained cats and dogs. And after plodding along through the storm for hours, believe me, the light from a ramshackle cabin in the woods looks mighty good to Eddie. The boy is wet, tired, hungry. His horse is ready to drop. Gus Lober, no Gus Lobe, Eddie and his horse just can't go any further. Who's off the hot plate? The stranger in these parts. What are you doing out a night like this? I'm a salesman. I got caught in a storm, man. I'm not sure of the road. Bacon you're cooking sure smells good, man. Say, I, I wonder if I could come in here until the storm's over and maybe get a bite to eat. I'd be glad to pay you well for it. How about it, sir? I reckon it'll be all right. I'll put on another rash of bacon. I'm satisfied. Oh, gosh, thanks. You can tie your horse in the shed back yonder. Your snack will be ready in a little bit. All right, thanks. Well, sir, Eddie felt a little better with his horse in the stable and some corn, pone, and bacon under his belt. But outside, the storm had redoubled in fury. And young Mr. Capps began wishing that he hadn't been so anxious to catch up with Gus Lowe. Gosh, looks like it's never going to let us. No, it don't. Hey, why don't you use some of my tobacco instead of that brand you're smoking? It's a whole lot better. <laughs> Just thinking, it's getting kind of late. So you think you could put me up here for the night so I could get an early start in the morning? I'll pay you well for your shelter. I reckon we can put you up. Oh. Up above? Oh, that'll be all right. Can't put you no other place. Well, it's a whole lot better than going out in the rain. Well, young fella, I reckon you're right tired. You want to turn in? Yeah, I guess I better. Ain't aiming to leave before we get up. Oh, no. Oh, I guess I better pay you now, huh? No, oh, no. That's all right. Kitty Caps is a pretty tired boy. All he wants now is a place to rest his weary body. He feels secure, sheltered from the storm, but boy, oh boy, he doesn't know what's coming to him in that lonely mountain cabin. That'll be your and over yonder. What's that? Who's that over there? Dead man. Dead man? What's he doing up here? Just went to sleep and didn't wake up. Been day to day. We're waiting for it to stop raining so we could take him out. Well, I don't think I'd like to stay up here. Well, there's nobody making you stay, stranger. But I reckon you might find it mighty damp outside. <laughs> they won't harm you none. Just the live ones you gotta be feared on. I guess you're right. Good night. Oh, can I have the lamp? Well, I reckon you can have it. Good night. out of the question for Eddie after what he had just learned, but he was dog-tired. He had to get some rest. So he 
took off his coat and shoes and lay down on the hard bed. The drumming of the rain on the roof lulled him. Soon he was sound asleep. The thunder did not waken him, but something else did. In a sleepy daze, he hears the sound of voices. Is he dreaming? Is it morning? No, he's not dreaming. And it's not morning. It is still night. And by golly, what a night for poor Eddie. That's a light coming through the crack in the floor. Ain't it rained it? Yes, those are real voices, all right. What's going on down there? Who's that big man with the others? What are they doing? And how did his saddlebags get down there? Ain't no money there. Must have it on him. What are we going to do now? Well, do you want the money? Sure. Better watch out. He might wake up this time. We'll take care of that. Eddie's wide awake now and plenty frightened. These people are thieves, perhaps worse. They might even be murderers. His mind flashes to the man in the other bed, the dead man. Perhaps he too had come here seeking shelter only to find death. They are murderers. Eddie's heart comes into his mouth. The crushed skull of the dead man tells him all he wants to know, and that's not all. He recognizes the poor battered features of his friend and rival, Gus Lowe. Gus Lowe, clubbed to death in his sleep, murdered in this very room. Gosh, I wouldn't be in poor Eddie Cap's shoes for a million dollars. It is his zero hour. Fate is closing in on him. He wants to get out of this house of death before they come for him. But how? No window up here. Only one way out. Through that trap door. And yet, going down that trap door will put him in the hands of the killers. But he better do something. There's no time to waste, Eddie. Terror gives him an idea. Why not change places with the dead man? That's it. Put Gus in his bed and take Gus's place. And he works fast. The storm muffles his movements. He lifts the dead body of Gus Loeb and carries it to his own bed. Carefully, he places the dead man to appear as though he were sleeping. And Eddie climbs into the blood-soaked bed. Just in the nick of time, he pulls that awful blanket over his head. Seconds drag like years as Eddie lies waiting with bated breath in the bed of a dead man. still alive, but his position was more dangerous than ever. Those murderers could not let him escape. Now he might talk, but his nerves would not let him stay in that room of death another minute. He had to get out some way. Beneath that trap door, four men are seated around the table, but Eddie realizes that it's time for a desperate move. It's now or never. on his horse and galloped off into the night. He reached Barberville safely and by morning was riding back with the sheriff and a posse. They caught the murderers and courthouse records show that the old man and his wife were sent to prison for life. The actual killer was hanged. And Joe, that ends the true adventure of Eddie Cap. Here's Eddie Cap in person, Floyd. Well, I'm glad to see you, Mr. Capps, and you don't look a day older either. Thanks, sir. Congratulations, Mr. Capps. Thank you. Well, Floyd, we'll be going along. Thanks. Hello. And that's all for today. But don't forget, I'll be back soon in the same theater with another thrilling true adventure. And until then, this is Boyd Gibbons wishing you happy adventure.
Why don't you use some of my tobacco instead of that brand you're smoking? It's a whole lot better. Ring it up. 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 Ring it